All right, here we are. So hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tales of the Cocktail full hands-in webinar. We are gathering here in this space every Monday to talk to leaders in the drinks industry about how we can really support each other through these crazy, um, crazy times that we're all we're all living through. So my name is Lola. I am the education manager at Tales of the Cocktail, and I am so excited to be here with three of my favorite drinks industry celebs. And if you guys can uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves, I'm gonna start with Lauren and then Jackie and then Amy. Tell us a little bit about where you are right now, what you do and how long you have been in isolation. All right, Lauren, are you with us? <laughs> oh, Lauren's frozen. So Jackie, if we can start with you, uh, hopefully Lauren can uh, join back on. Uh, Jackie Summers from Brooklyn, New York. I've been in since the 9th of March. Uh, things, as you see in the news, are bad here. Uh, and it's all relative, if that makes any sense, uh, which I think is one of the weirdest things to navigate. Like I physically feel fine uh, and I'm safe in my home and there's food and there's beverages. Uh, and so I don't want to complain because that's more than a lot of people have. At the same time, uh, I, right now we all have concerns whether or not they are health concerns or financial concerns uh, about ourselves and others. So thank you for giving us a platform to address these. Yeah, Lauren, I see you're back with us. Do you want to introduce yourself? Now it's uh, my internet stops at least 25 times a day. So if we have this webinar at five in the morning, Amsterdam time, then I will be golden. Um, so my name is Lauren and I live in Amsterdam. Uh, I just moved here three and a half months ago with my husband, Jonathan from Vancouver, Canada. And we moved here over Christmas and arrived uh, thinking, yay, we're gonna go all over Europe and investigate all these incredible places. And then as soon as the weather turned, it was just kidding, you're gonna, you're gonna stay inside and work from home until June 1st. So it's been, it's, it, yeah, it's been, it's definitely been a challenge, but I love, our Tales family, and of course, I love uh, Lola, Jackie, and Amy, and everybody involved in this. And um, I think it's really important to get these really broad perspectives because even though we're all going through something difficult, everywhere around the world, the story is slightly different. I think it's great to give perspective and pause and uh, just try and find um, what we can be grateful in these in these moments. Thanks, Lauren. Can you introduce yourself as well? Yeah, absolutely. My name is Amy Ward. Uh, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, uh, by way of Baltimore. I just moved out here about six months ago. Um, and I have been isolating since March 12th when I returned from uh, two weeks traveling to every single hotspot in the United States doing some, some health activations. So I'm here. I have not left since then and just trying to deal with the situation. Definitely. Aren't we all? Um, awesome. Well, I'm going to be asking y'all a few questions and we're going to really dig into what it means to build and maintain your community while living in isolation. And I think the three of you are doing some really awesome stuff and we're excited for you to share that. So just to start, I know we here in the U.S., we just found out the isolation um, guidelines have been extended until April 30th. So that affects, um, it affects our community and it affects our businesses. Um, how have these guidelines impacted your work life and your connection to your community? Uh, Jackie, can we start with you? Well, like many of us, uh, work sort of evaporated 
all of the plans that I had for 2020 financially, gone, gone. Uh, so in addition to the anxiety around health, now there's anxiety around finances. Uh, however, my feeling is always, we are, at, at the end of the day, we're creatives. So we have to keep figuring out new ways to create relevant to what our tools and circumstances are. I've been a student of strategy three or four decades. And one of the things that really comes up consistently is how quickly can you adapt to new information? So I think one of the most important things we can do right now is make sure we have the most accurate, most updated information, figure out what our tools, what propensities we have and what tools we have, and adapt our skill sets to current reality, because reality is shifting on a day-to-day -day basis. Jackie, um, Amy, what, what are you doing and how has, how has the coronavirus affected your day-to-day -day work life and your community? Yeah, I don't uh, echo exactly what Jackie just said, but it's kind of the same thing. Uh, and like Lauren, I didn't quite introduce myself properly. Um, I've been a bartender for many, many years, but I moved out to Chicago to uh, pursue my business full time, which is the health tender. Um, I am a health coach with a background in exercise physiology, but also a bartender and hospitality lover and, and career person. Um, so I moved out to Chicago to pursue my business full time. And the moment that you know, the bars got shut down in Chicago. I lost my bartending gig. And the moment everybody got a, kind of got put on lockdown, that absolutely froze every single activation that I had for the rest of the year. Um, everything that I have worked for putting on myself or working with other brands to do has been suspended indefinitely. So I became unemployed very quickly. And I'm still trying to navigate how being a independent contractor, self-employed, single LLC person works in terms of being able to apply for unemployment. But as of right now, there's not a lot of good stuff associated with it. Um, so what I did in response to that, I went into crisis mode for myself and started exerting all of my coping skills, which was to keep myself completely occupied with exercise. Um, and I took that uh, in, ter in terms of like doing all my exercise videos and just doing a veritable shit ton of it <laughs> and putting it on online free for everybody to have. So um, it was a coping skill for myself, but also a way to provide uh, resources to the community as well. So I wanted to make sure that everybody was having physical outlets that they could do inside there. I'm, I'm showing things on the third floor apartment that I have with no equipment, um, making sure that people could see what they could accomplish in minimal space with minimal equipment. Um, and yeah, I, I'm sure we can talk about this a little bit more, but the other part of that, like when I talk about coping skills, this is for mental health as well. So I really wanted to put this out here to make sure that people could have something that would contribute positively to their mental health while they're dealing with this kind of situation. But I will Definitely. We'll, we'll dig into that. Um, Lauren, can you tell us a little bit about how, how this has affected your work life and your community? Man, it's, you know what? It's a really complex one because the the nature of the role that I have in my in my professional life and echoes a lot in my personal life is you know I have a I have a, a role that essentially you know works as an aspirational uh, role model position for 180 global ambassadors in, in 60 countries and the entirety of our world class bartending program both consumers and with uh, with with bartenders uh, that are working in bars. So it's it's been very challenging. I've spent the, you know, 300 days a year for the last three and a half years spending time in a very face-to-face, -face, very social and very, um, very interpersonal way as well with all of these people. And I think the hardest thing for me was trying to reconcile what the next transition of that looks like. And in often people in our positions and Amy and Jackie as well, and most of the people that are tuning into this, we're, we're all in that position where we are role models in our, in our community. And 
it it's okay for us to sort of for to grieve to grieve the loss of our jobs and the to grieve the loss of um, those physical connections and you know to grieve what our jobs were but some of those things might not ever come back in the way that they were and I think it's important that as we're trying to transition into this new normal that we're also trying to embrace what the new normal can bring and while there's there's so much it feels like there's so much darkness and so much negativity around a lot of things we do have to try and find the silver lining in that and I guess the, the point of what I'm saying is that as we moved our our entire lives virtually and and are developing new relationships, I feel like we, in a way, haven't ever been closer. You know, I think that we've been making an effort to connect and, and really reach out and dig deep into people um, more often now than I think we did before. And I, I just... I. Th- if we can pull that that sort of one silver lining moment out of this, I would I would say it's that. And I think for all of us that are role models in the industry, when when we do start to embrace what our lives were before and bringing that part of coming back to work and the bars are opening and again, I mean, people are going to be looking to us again to let us, you know, for us to let them know that it's safe. It's safe to get on a plane. It's safe to go to bars. It's safe to go to restaurants. It's safe to hug somebody. Um, so I think it, it covers a whole matter of um, of feelings and, and coping mechanisms with that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and for everyone who is tuning in right now, if you have questions for these three wonderful guests, you can go ahead and add them on the right-hand side. Um, so I think we'll move into you three are all... Um, kind of sprung into action really quickly and are already doing some things for the community virtually. Um, Amy, I know you mentioned briefly um, you're doing some fitness, some virtual fitness. Can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So what I wanted to make sure was that um, in terms of fitness, that people could have really simple things that they could do where they don't need a ton of space, that they don't need any equipment to exercise, to, to exercise and have like something that kicks your butt. Um, so it's mainly using all body weight or just objects that are around the house. Um, I've also taken an opportunity to work on a little bit of uh, mobility issues, like doing mobility exercises that I know pertain to the bartender body and how it's kind of wrecked from what we do. So I've been doing a lot with that. Um, I, as a result, I also got to put out uh, a, a video I had been working on with Seedlip from a few months ago that was for Speed Rack specifically, where we focus on how to actually stretch as a bartender. So it's everything related to bartenders itself. Um, so basically, I've been trying to do whatever I possibly can with little resources so people don't feel intimidated about trying exercise. I yeah. also have taken the approach of doing it uh, filmed, uh, like pre-recorded and then posted rather than doing the live videos. I love all the live videos that are happening right now. Um, it is a huge influx of live videos that everybody is going live, like all the time right now. Um, but I want to be able to make something right. people could come back to at their own convenience when they had time, when it was something that they could work through. Um, and then I've just made myself open to people if they have questions about any of the particular exercises. Um, just to be able to explain them a little bit better. Yeah, so what's the best way for folks to access this information? Is it on your Instagram Live? Do you have some videos posted on your website, um, YouTube? Um, So everything is on Instagram right now. And I started last night actually building a YouTube channel because I know that's the other thing that I have to do. So building everything in YouTube to future embed into my website, that way everybody can have access depending on whether you're a social media person or whether you just prefer going straight to a, a website to, to see things. Um, so I'm slowly building up that, but it also has been, uh, I am not a video editor by any means, but I've certainly managed to teach myself basic video editing skills in the last two weeks. So it's been, it doesn't, I work out much quicker than I edit videos. So it's a, a balance of those things and learning how to do it very quickly, succinctly, and then be able to put it up on the inter- interwebs. Definitely. Jackie, I think I see your cute kitty over there. I know you've been you've been doing some virtual virtual gatherings. Can you tell us a little bit about those? So when the hammer came down in California, 
New York and Chicago read the tea leaves and knew that we were immediately next. It was suddenly hundreds of people out of work. Um, I don't know if anyone else knows of Yannick Benjamin Sommelier. He always says, do what you can, start where you are with what you have. And it seemed to me that where I was was home. And what I had was a gigantic network of people who make great cocktails and Wi-Fi. Uh, and then there's the understanding of why people go to a bar. The feeling has always been that people don't go to a bar to drink. Anyone can drink at home. You go to a bar to hang out, to meet friends or meet new people. And in theory, we could still do that, except within the safety of our homes, because we were all drinking at home anyway. So, you know, Daniela Veras is on this. On this, she's in the she's in the text somewhere. She and I and Lauren Myerskoff put this in together that we figured would serve two purposes. A, it would give the community a space to gather and talk about the things that they're experiencing and share what's happening real world uh, in their spaces. And at the same time, we could put money in bartenders' hands, like actual, actual, actual cash. The theory was virtual bar, uh, real tips. So we've been up for a couple of weeks now. Okay, uh, it's been. I found this on Shut up, Siri. <laughs> it's been up for a couple of weeks now. It's been in the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, The Guardian. It's been all over the place. Uh, we've got 400 bartenders signed up for shifts. We've got brands that are lining up to back them. Uh, the average bartender is bringing home about $250 for a shift. So if that means someone's paying their groceries for that week or that month, God bless. Uh, and we've had people tune in from Belize to Berlin. Like folks are tuning in from all over the world. And it's really interesting because you're getting the regulars, you know, the, pe the faces you're going to see every day because it's how they or it's, it's something that then I look forward to at the end of their day. And we're getting new people who are coming in and going, well, I'm not a cocktail person, but thank you for telling me the difference between tequila and mezcal. That was useful. Uh, so hopefully we can serve the community and serve bartenders in the time being using the tools that are available to us. That's awesome. And if folks wanna join in on that, uh happy hour gathering how can they find that facebook there's a facebook link it's danny and jackie's virtual cocktail hour uh i'll be happy to post the link in the comment section later awesome thanks jackie lauren i know you told me this is your 12th video conference today um, what have you been up to and how are you maintaining your community? <laughs> oh boy. Well, th this is I actually lied. I counted. It was, a, it was actually number 13. Um, and, Lucky 13. and I haven't decided if I'm going to call my brother tonight or not. So I might have a 14th in my future. Um, the, you know, maintaining community in, in this moment, I feel like, you know, for, in, incredible people in our industry. This is like our time to shine. It's like we've always had great ideas of things that we wanted to do, but maybe there was just too much of the audience you tried to to penetrate, and it just it just can't get out there. So I think, I think you know, and I've, I've mentioned this to a few people, trying to just manage what your circle of influence is, which is actually this, rather than your circle of concern. I think it's really difficult because we are worried so much about our, our big circle of concern and we end up trying to do so many big projects and and you know it's not worth doing unless it's massive um, but I think just doing the little things and knowing that the the little things are enough um, I think I think these the you know we change them from happy hour to cocktail hour in um, in our Diageo and world class chats because um, we realized most of the people that were on our chat um, from the 180 ambassadors, and then we opened it up to so many other parts of the company, people just wanted to join. They just wanted to join and be. They didn't necessarily want to have their camera on sometimes. They didn't want to have their microphone on. They just wanted to be in the presence of the chatter of other people that were talking about anything. Um, and it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's been really inspiring. Um, just, just today, the call that I left 10 minutes early so I could join this one, 
uh, was our BAs in in Italy that have been in lockdown and super confinement, uh, like the parameters of their lockdown are, are pretty aggressive. And the news coming out of Italy is is also quite it, it's quite emotional and sad and doesn't appear to be um, getting getting much better these days. And they were giving us the recipe on how to make their nonna risotto that they make every Sunday, and they're making it virtually. So they'll one will be in Milan making the risotto on Zoom. And then the other one will be in Puglia making the risotto and they're they're cooking together. So we're talking about what they're doing on the weekend and it's it's marvelous. Like who uses the word marvelous to describe anything in the weirdest and most heartbreaking situations that we're in. And, you know, and, and those are just the work ones that uh, that we do. And we started those on March 16th. And it started with three people because three people really needed to chat. And we just, we started those and they've been going uh, twice a day since March 16th um, amidst all the other things we're doing. And then, uh, you know, uh, someone like Pam Wiz, as an example, has, has joined the, you know, the Beard Sling Happy Hour, which is, um, you know, we, <laughs> we invite 83 people every day. There's a uh, a 12 GMT and a, and a 7 PM GMT every, every second day um, where we just try and get people from all time zones to make sure that they're, they're represented and can communicate. And um, you know, it's uh, it's been an amazing moment to watch how people are connecting all over the world. And, and we put themes on them, book clubs, literary drinks, you know, casual Fridays, some guy dressed up as Batman and crashed one of our events last week. And, another dude in the UK that we work with dressed up as Sailor Moon. And he had two different costumes two weeks in a row dressed as Sailor Moon. I'm like, this is so crazy. So it's giving people something really amazing to look forward to every day. And it's just as simple as just, I don't know, Google Hangout, Zoom link, Microsoft yeah. Teams, so easy, Facebook, whatever. Absolutely. I think we're all looking for that connection. And I think we can still find it in ways like this. So that is beautiful. Um, I think one of the big questions we have is, what do you recommend for others in the industry? We, you know, we've gone over, this is a really tough time. And a lot of people are losing work. And a lot of people are in stressful situations. So what do you recommend just to bring calm and joy into your regular daily routine. Amy, I know I've seen on your Instagram um, some great lists and you do self-massage and what else uh, What else do you recommend? Um, at the end of the day, I try to recommend that people figure out what used to make them happy as a kid and do that. So whether it's coloring in a book or do, doing coloring books or doing puzzles or um, just finding what brings you that sheer happiness. And if it's reconnecting with people via whatever these di different virtual opportunities are, then you do that. I've had the opportunity to do that with my old bar team back in Baltimore. We made dinner together, like everybody made their own separate dinners and then sat down at the table and like had family meal together at night. And it was very, it was like the best thing for my heart at that point in time. Um, so I definitely, you know, find what like sparks your inner child and go after that. Um, meditation and breathing has been super critical right now in terms of like trying to mitigate anxiety. Um, but in at the end of the day, I recommend that most people just find something that helps them cope. And it means not paying attention to social media 24 seven. And it means not paying attention to the news 24 seven, give your brain a break. So you can try to just cope with what's going on right now. Um, the reason why I focus so heavily on exercise and there's stuff I post about nutrition as well is because all of those impact our mental health. There are neurotransmitters that are released when we exercise and I can go down the nerd hole and, and tell you all about those things. Um, but the neurotransmitters uh, emit really positive reactions in our body that also trigger really good things in our brain. Same thing with eating, the things that we put into our body positively impact our mental health. Anywhere from, you know, having healthy gut health from probiotics to drinking enough water so your brain has mm. the ability to just function properly. You know, there's there's a lot of different things. But start with the start with the what made you happy when you were five years old. Go from there and then start, you know, try and find ways to connect with people in the virtual 
virtual capacity. Like it's, it's a beautiful thing. We should be doing it. It helps us in terms of the coping mechanisms that we need to have personal connection and a release from the day to day. Definitely. I love that. I love the inner child as well. Um, what do you recommend, Lauren? What are, what are you doing to bring that calm and to bring that joy into a difficult time? Well, I am not naturally a calm person. I am incredibly hyperactive. I also have like epic levels of OCD in these moments. I'm, uh, I have become, uh, you know, like scrubbing my hands almost until they're, until they're raw, because I think like bartenders and chefs in moments like this, where it's, um, X, X, X virus germs, you know, you end up going even more insane into cleaning and your own like personal hygiene than I think you normally would. So I think it's, uh, we're trying to manage, I guess, some of the, the weird manic behavior that comes out, I think when, when we're in, uh, isolation or when we're in moments where our choices are taken away, I think is what it is. There's, there's elements to, to our freedom, like in these, in these moments that we just don't have control over. So I think it's recognizing that, um, and finding the ways that you can, that you can deal with that. And for some people they have, uh, they don't have a lot of work going on right now, uh, you know, in terms of whether they're, they're, they're working in a bar or they're, they're consulting or they're working in an office whatever it might be, everyone's situation is very different. And so I think still creating a schedule for yourself so you don't miss out on when you should be engaging in your self-care. When should you be exercising? When have you scheduled your meals? Are you eating huge amounts of sugar? Are you drinking too much? Are you doing things that might not be healthy in the long run? Um, so I think scheduling those things is, is, is really important. Um, I also think uh, making plans for the future because this too shall pass. And I think, you know, by writing our goals down and, and really writing long form journal entries of how we feel, how we're managing and where we hope tomorrow brings us, I think is a way to help manifest where we need to try and get to over a few days, over a few weeks, a few months. And it's really hard. It's easier said than done. And um, certainly we all need coping mechanisms in this time. So that's, uh, you know, I, I will just say one thing, one weird thing that we started yesterday, because I've been nominated to do some strange things on social media lately, um, like drinking water, which, which was an interesting one. So thanks to Laura Green for that. Um, but I started doing a, a Disney lip syncing competition yesterday, just out of the blue. Um, and yesterday was uh, songs from The Little Mermaid, and I nominated a few people, including some other people that I didn't think would lip sync to Disney songs. So I'm really hoping that they come back around on that. <laughs> I love that. Love Disney. What What are you doing, Jackie? What are your strategies? What do you What do you recommend to the folks listening in? As Lauren would say, three points. Three points. <laughs> uh, the first is, you're not your productivity. A lot of the people on this call are used to filling every moment of every day with something. They're used to 80 hour weeks, they're used to hustle and grind, and we have been raised in a society that values you on what you produce, but your value is innate. Your worth to society is relative. Like, we just now figured out that we all pretty much have the same worth. So I, the most important thing to remember here is you don't increase or decrease in value as a human being based on your ability to contribute monetarily to the system. You are you, and you have value no matter what. Um, in, in line with that, I think it's important to know that it's okay to be still. There's a big temptation to fill every moment with distraction. And I feel like that's a missed opportunity to actually do the hardest thing possible. And that's to sit with the quiet of your own thoughts, uh, which is really, really difficult. It's easier to do pretty much anything than to deal with your own disquietude, but your grief, and we all are managing some level of grief at this point, your grief needs a hug. 
sit with it for a little while and let it know that you're paying attention to it. The harder you try to ignore your grief, the more it's going to gnaw at you. So pay attention to the stuff that you might not normally have the opportunity to. So you're not your productivity. Sit with yourself, just be willing to be quiet. And I forgot what the third thing is. If it comes back to me, I'll bring it, I'll bring it up again uh, or post it in the chat. But I think it's important to look at repatterning. We were all stuck in cycles that were functioning, but seeing how quickly those cycles and those systems came apart is reason to consider whether or not it's worth going back to them. We should consider how to create systems that are more sustainable, things that value us all equally, and things that are not as easily disassembled uh, as we saw health and finance happen in the last few weeks. Let's, uh, let's take the opportunity, now that we have a little bit of time on our hands, and actually figure out how we could do this differently and better when we have the opportunity to. Oh yeah, and this yeah, guy, he does I not- I agree, he does um, not well said, Jackie. Anything. I'm gonna follow up, yeah, <laughs> so sweet. I'm gonna uh, follow up mm -hmm. with you um, and just kind of wanna ask all of you guys, um, in, these, in these difficult times, what have you seen uh, your community do that has inspired you? What have you seen that has shown kind of the human connectedness side? We'll start with you, Jackie. That was the third thing. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> Perfect. Um, if you are really, really stuck in the vicious cycle of feeling bad about your situation, help somebody else. Nothing will get your mind off of yourself like figuring out how to help somebody else. Because right now, everybody's going through it and everyone needs help. And if we all just figure out how to help somebody else, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get through this with the least amount of possible damage. So if you cannot do anything for yourself, figure out how to help somebody else. And and even if you just help one person, like I, my thing is, I know there are several people out there that are carrying the burdens of hundreds or maybe thousands of people. Help that person. Like if you know a psychiatrist or a doctor or the President of a charitable, charitable foundation, who's actually really carrying just so many people right now, reach out to that person. The, 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 the people you think are the toughest folks are the most vulnerable right now. Check on them, see how they're doing. Yeah, that is great. Um, Amy, what about you? Uh, what, is, what has inspired you recently? Um. I think collectively watching um, this community be vulnerable and be okay with their vulnerability and kind of allowing that to band everybody together has been a beautiful thing. Um, this is, whether we want to admit it or not, it's a industry that has a lot of ego into it. And I've seen a lot of that ego kind of fall away um, because everybody is in a very unique, vulnerable position, and it's a thousand percent making everybody come together. Like this is the one thing that we can all agree on. Agree on is that we're in a tough position, and we have to figure out how to get out of it. Um, and we start by doing that together. So I have absolutely loved watching everybody just kind of drop their guards, drop their egos, and and really start coming together. Um, and I do. I, I agree with with Jackie, especially in terms of like being able to help somebody else. Like, I know this is about like what, what's what I've seen, but like, if you can't do anything right now, you can help somebody else at the very least, like channel your energy into something else that's really positive right now. That's how all of my stuff started is because I'm in a position where I can't do anything, but I can try to help other people by providing free resources for health. Um, but I, I, again, I think like the biggest thing I've seen about the community is like people allowing themselves to be vulnerable, 
for them allowing themselves to ask for help, for them dropping their guards, banding together, finding new ways to connect with one another, and just seeing a little bit more humanity pop out of what was already a very humanity-driven industry that we're in. Thank you, Amy. And what about you, Lauren? Well, I agree wholeheartedly with, with Amy and Jackie, 100%. And two points here. Um, I, I guess the first one is that, uh, touching a little bit on what Jackie was saying, it's, it's so amazing that in moments where we've, we've always felt, I, I think in this industry, a very ego-driven industry, that uh, we always had so much to prove to each other, um, that there was always a, a very strong divide between um, you know, who maybe was at the top and who was really struggling to figure out their place in the universe. Um, and I think in this moment, we've all been sort of given a clean slate to be equal in this and come out with every idea, every possible innovation, every level of emotion um, with every goal in mind. And if you can't figure out how to do it, this is the moment to connect with so many people that can help you figure out what you need to do. This isn't like a Laura needs to save the planet or Amy or Jackie or Lola, like we don't need to save the planet. What we need to do is work together, understand where our strengths lie and with you know, with quick, decisive, and really, really good leadership, be able to to bring everybody into that, so they feel like they they can own a piece of of helping get themselves out of this moment. Um, that was my first point. My second point <laughs> was that, um, and I and I speak about this on now on a corporate level because I know that there's uh, there's quite a lot of people that that are working in the brand world, and whether inside the industry or outside the industry, um, I think what has happened within hospitality and in every position, both in, in bars and restaurants, um, cooks, servers, managers, sommeliers, dishwashers, um, every single person as part of our supply chain, um, everyone now understands what we do. You know, I think it's shed major light um, from, from the, the people that sit in a very specific place um, on this planet now understand, I think, in, in a really... Um, important way what people in hospitality do. And I think now that they understand that, we can all come together and build some pretty Im incredible programming that will help to put things back together. Yeah, great. Um, going off of that now, and if anyone else has questions, um, feel free to add them on the right-hand side of your screen. But this is a question from Eddie, which uh, any of you can answer. Um, with the uncertainty of getting jobs back once everything is over, do you guys have any recommendations for job hunting? Should people be doing it now? Um, can people expect to be hired back? Any any insight? What do y'all think? I think now is a good time to foment community. I think what happens too often is people wait uh, for the community to help them until they need, instead of trying to be a part of the community before they need. So we don't know what it's going to look like when we come out the other side. Right. But what we do know is we will try to help people that we are aware need help. So if you can, to the extent possible, implant yourself in community and create those connections right now, when we come out the other side, you're going to be in a much better shot to have whatever needs to happen, happen. So maybe not looking for a job right now, but involve yourself in community right now. That way, when we get out, you'll be first of mind. Yeah, that makes sense. Amy, were you going to add something as well? Yeah, I, um, I, I would take my opinion is slightly different just because I am also the type A OCD person, like the, the failing to plan is planning to fail. Um, if you're in a position where you're not financially going to be okay in the long run, you do need, it is a great idea for you to start looking for a job right now, at least on the temporary to get yourself by. So you can have a way of living in the process of all this happening. There are <clears throat> plenty of jobs out there right now with the grocery stores, with liquor stores, with, um, 
there's a lot of things that are out there that have immediate need right now. Um, so I would say that if you're in a position where you're struggling, don't wait for something to change with unemployment. Don't wait for something to change with your, your, uh, workplace like take care of yourself now because you are the one who's responsible for yourself nobody else is going to take care of you we don't know what's going to happen with any of these stimulus packages or anything like that don't hold off and wait and and put all your eggs into that basket waiting for it i would say take care of yourself right now first start with like a real hard look at your finances do like this is the great time to reevaluate everybody's budgets to figure out where you are how long you can live on what you have and where you need to go from here um, and if you're not in a position where you have a couple months worth of of savings for for living like your rent and any other things that you're responsible for plus groceries like if you don't have that saved up right now take care of yourself, go get a job right now. And then if you get to go back to your, your bar or your restaurant, when things open up again, that's great. You do the proper thing of putting in a two weeks notice if it's time for you to leave and then you go back or you found something else that also complements your lifestyle. So I would say taking a good look at what your financial situation is right now and then going to get a job because it is about taking care of the self. So financial health is just important to me as physical health and mental health. Like financially, if your health depends on you having a job and having influx of income, then go look for something right now. That's the overly practical person talking about. Sure. Lauren, do you have any thoughts on that? And, and we're about to wrap up. So any final thoughts just kind of for everybody tuning in? I have OCD, so I fully agree with Amy, and I have nothing else to add on that. I think uh, I think planning is is the way to go. Um, I think the uh, the final thought for me on this is that um, we have always posted our highlight reels on Instagram and social media. We have we have felt that it is important to only share with the world the most amazing things that we're doing. Hi, look at me now. I'm in Australia. Hi, look at me now with my new dog. Hi, look at me now here and there. And I think it uh, it has created this false sense of reality that none of us actually live in. And I I do think that um, quite a few of us are having, um, I guess, a problem just coming right out and saying there is a problem. Um, and I'll be the first to admit that. You know, I uh, I have been uh, raised on the understanding that if I show any element of weakness, you know, that it becomes something that is a detriment. And, you know, I, I, especially in, in the time that we're in right now, I'm trying to be better at being honest about the situation and trying to be honest with, with um, friends and family and even people that I, that I speak to on a regular basis that, you know, things aren't okay. And, and in Europe, I mean, Netherlands is, is better off than Italy, but Europe as a whole is still in a really bad scene. And we've we've also stopped talking about Asia completely, which is also not fair because Asia is still going through. I, I just had a call with with a bunch of bartenders this morning from Asia, and it's 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 still really bad over there, and and it's escalating into different levels. So I think um, I think we just all need to be mindful of how we're dealing in all of this and be honest. And then also um, I think which echoes perfectly Amy and Jackie's points is we need to reach out and we need to reach out frequently for ourselves and for other people to make sure everyone knows that we're there. Definitely. Uh, Jackie, any final thoughts? Stay safe, stay home, wash your hands, tip your bartender. I love that. <laughs> that is perfect. Amy? Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to type and I don't know if anything is going through. Uh, Francesca had, had made a statement that people have a lot of public facing positions right now because of the risks of uh, COVID-19. And I completely understand. There are also a wealth of online jobs that are open right now, especially with the food delivery services. There's a lot of operational stuff on the back, back end of things that they need um, people helping out with those particular jobs too. But there are there are some online resources and online jobs that are out there too, but I don't want to uh, negate the fact that there's a ton of anxiety surrounding public facing uh, positions. So I, I get that and don't want to think that everybody can just jump into that, but 
final thought is that we are all in this together. We are going to be stronger coming out of this. It's just a matter of us staying together, being open, and being accepting of of the the situation and the people around us to try to get ourselves to a better place. Absolutely, I think um, that's really the biggest point here that we are all in this together. Uh, just want to say a huge thank you to all three of you for joining us today. This was really insightful. You guys are inspiring. Um, it was awesome for me to get to speak to you guys. I'm going to go ahead and put your Instagrams up on the screen. So if anybody wants to reach out to these wonderful folks, go ahead and send them a message on Instagram. Um, if you have um, an idea for what you want to hear about on this webinar series, you can go ahead and email me at lola at talesofthecocktail.org. And then finally, I'm really excited to share that next week, Laura Green, who is a licensed professional counselor and also part of our lovely drinks industry is going to be really diving into mental health. So that'll be next Monday. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us, and we will see you next week. Thank you. Wash your hands. Bye. Wash your hands. <laughs> Bye. Stay home. <laughs>